Dana White is officially in on the John Jones glazing jokes now. Uh, Dana also mentioned that fight news is coming for Connor, Chandler, Volk, Oliveira, and making fun of Marab for taking out stitches, probably the worst way possible. But you know what, Adam? Are you? Uh, are, have you ever taken stitches out? By the way, I, I I don't know. Everybody's making a big deal out of this. I did that a couple of times as a kid. I didn't realize this was such a big deal. I think sometimes you have to. Most yeah. stitches. I, I've gone a few surgeries. I've torn my ACL a few times, and they have stitches. Like stitches are supposed to fall out. I think. Right. But sometimes they don't, and then you cut them. I think. It but was I the think size it, of the scissors that was the big deal. I think it was the size of the scissors, and I think like the stitches like looked very raw, like they didn't look like they were supposed to fall out yet. Right, but, like, like fuck, do I know? Maybe it was too early. Yeah, that that might be what it is. That it was just too early because I was looking at it and I'm like, oh, I've done that before, but I'm also not a doctor, so I have no idea. But yeah, yeah, uh, neither is Mirab. <laughs> yeah, apparently not. But yeah. Um, yeah, so we don't have any fights this week. Uh, so if you checked out Insider Betting, you will notice that that we don't really have any fights this week, but we're 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 ripe on stories here because there's a lot going on. This is probably my favorite uh, of the week is that John, uh, Dana White's officially gotten in on the John Jones glazing jokes. I'm sure you've seen this by now that uh, Dana would, was in a comment section on I forget what Instagram it was, but he actually literally commented the word glazing in the comment section which has been a joke now for like a couple months that dana's constantly glazing john jones because he loves because he he will not give an inch on john jones being the pound for pound number one fighter in the world and the goat and everything and so he tags john jones in a comment section i, I should have had this ready to go it's he says at john jones this word glaze just popped up out of nowhere like everybody says quote wild now all this glaze talk is wild and i just loved that dana white was using the word glazing i just felt like that was like that that was the internet is kind of like finally did its job you know what i mean like it got it got to dana white now we're now now i think we can kill the joke yeah no it's hilarious it's like him getting behind like the the, the oil me up like meme that was yes. going with around with dana I love I love how he bites into it. Speaking of comments, kind of off track here. You see John Jones's comment towards Tom Aspinall. Yeah, I mean, where we could talk about that was crazy, <laughs> <laughs> crazy comment. I think deleted it pretty quickly after, but that was yeah, good for him for for putting that out there. <laughs> he deleted it very quickly. I'm not going to repeat exactly what it said, but he basically implied that um, he implied that Tom Aspinall is glazing John Jones. That's what he yeah. implied. Quite literally, though. Yeah, quite literally <laughs> glazing him. Um, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. But yeah, so I just I just love that Dana gets in on it, gets in on the joke. But it has has sort of reached a point of absurdity in some regard. He did a, a press conference following Dana White's Contender Series the other night where he brought up where, where, where the John Jones pound for pound debate got brought up while he's doing this. He ends up having a 12 minute debate with the media about it, uh, where the media actually some media members. I don't, did you watch any of that, by the way, the, the full thing or did just bits and pieces of it? I, I saw mostly bits and pieces, but I, I yeah. did run through like the 12 minute mark there, but most of, I, I, I like skimmed through it. Most of the things I saw were like in shorts and stuff. There was one oh, yeah, media guy who was actually getting pretty, uh, like pretty like hardcore with Dana, like going about why Dana needs to accept that John Jones is not the number one pound for pound guy because the argument is about activity. That John Jones, Dana saying John Jones is an active fighter who got hurt while he was the pound for pound number one, so he shouldn't be removed from those rankings just because he got hurt. But what the writers were saying is that well, he hasn't fought for over a year. And also, you know, some points that I saw being brought up was that the same has happened in the past for other fighters where Dana sort of contradicted himself, where I think Aljamain Sterling, when he was hurt going into the Sean O'Malley fight, uh, they were basically, they were calling him an inactive fighter because he was hurt, but they're not calling John Jones an inactive fighter right now, even though he's hurt. So just interesting that that, that happened, but. Um, I know that you've been talking about this a lot. Do you feel like John Jones is ranked properly at this point at number three? And be careful what you say because Dana may be watching. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think activity plays like a like the biggest role into it. I think it's just been 
like Dana has a somewhat legitimate point where like John technically hasn't been like super inactive. Like he got injured, uh, like he had a fight booked, he got injured, and then he had another fight booked. Um, so hopefully, like this next one's gonna be booked. So he's like, I guess in those terms, he's been active, even though he hasn't been fighting. Um, but yeah, three three is arguably a little too high. But it's kind of it, there isn't anyone who's really worth putting ahead of him at the moment. You know, yeah. like most champions are newer champions. Um, so I think I think who's ahead of him right now makes sense. Yeah, it's it's a weird it's just a weird conversation because. Um, I don't think anybody is going to argue that John Jones is like the best fighter in the world. It's, but that's not right. Like what the argument is necessarily. Uh, anyways, we can go back and forth on it, but I thought that Dana did something kind of brilliant because he went on, uh, Instagram live yesterday. And as soon as I see Dana white going on Instagram live, I'm one of those guys. I always click on it right away. Cause like if there's big fight news or something's of coming course. out, I have, to, I have to be there. I have to make sure I'm, I'm on top of it. And he was promoting power slap road to the title and he knows deep down that most people who are going to watch his instagram lives are not going to watch him talk about power slap road to the title so while he is talking about it right at, at the beginning like in the first minute of his ig live he looks over at like the whiteboard on his right side i'll play the video actually power slap road to the title reality show right now on rumble Right now on Rumble. You know what's f***ing great? Listen. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you right now to watch Power Slap Road to the title on Rumble. I'm looking at my board right here. These f***ing media guys have John Jones ranked number three in the pound for pound. I know I keep f***ing going back to this, but these guys are so f***ing stupid. It's unbelievable. Anyway, Power Slap Road to the title right now. Live on Rumble. So he looks over at his whiteboard and this is like the, uh, they have the pound for pound rankings and then they have like the war room, which is where all their matchups are, the, everything that they have planned. And he yeah. says, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at my board here and these media guys have John Jones ranked number third. Can you believe these guys? Anyways, power slap road to the title. <laughs> and yeah. I, and I, I bought it. I, I posted it immediately. I, that I thought it was a hilarious clip. And then somebody pointed out to me that like, hey, you did exactly what Dana White wanted there. You you got a power slap promotion in with him talking about John Jones. Yeah, I honestly, I didn't think about it until you brought it up to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a great marketing tactic. And that's why the UFC is so good at what they do. They've marketed the crap out of their sport. And they're, that's, why, that's why they've grown so much over the past few years, right? So it's what Dana White and the UFC do really well. He knew, he knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah, I mean, if you're especially just considering you're fresh off of like this huge debate, everybody's talking about it. It's like it's probably the biggest joke on you as the owner of the president, as the president of the UFC. The fact that he brought it up there was just so funny to me. It was my yeah. favorite things uh, of the week. So I'm happy we got it out. Anyways, yeah. uh, we're going to move on because Dana did say some other interesting things. But first... We have to tell you a little bit about an offer from our friends over at DraftKings. We will be back to the episode in just a second. But first, I got to tell you guys, college football is finally back and I am stoked. I know what you're thinking. This is a fighting channel. Why are you talking about college football? Well, those guys are kind of like the gladiators of the gridiron. They deserve our respect. And you know what else deserves respect? DraftKings, because they have an amazing offer for you right now. And we have partnered up with DraftKings to bring it to you. New DraftKings customers who bet $5 receive $200 in bonus bets instantly. And all you got to do is use our promo code inside fighting when you sign up. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry about it. Just go use DraftKings Daily Fantasy Sports. It's what I do all the time as a Californian. I love it. Again, new DraftKings customers who bet $5 will receive $200 in bonus bets just by using our promo code inside fighting. Love it. Make sure you guys take advantage of that. Um, we got a good one next week, too. NFL season's coming up. UFC 306 is coming up. Lots of good offers for you guys. Um, Sports gets so much more exciting in September. It's crazy. It, it, <laughs> There's it, so it, many it, things it, to bet on. The parlays go wild. 
<laughs> it's the best time of year. I mean, fantasy football is is like I have my fantasy football draft uh, next week. I have two, nice. like back to back. And this is when it's just like they say that uh, like in, in NBA, they say that the NBA season doesn't start till Christmas because that's when uh, like all the big, you know, they that's when they put their best matchups right there on Christmas yeah. Day. I say like the sports year doesn't start until like early September because that's when football starts. That's when like the baseball season is winding down. The NBA season is about to start. The hockey season is about to start. Everything just happening at once. It's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's the best, best time. And then it's just depressing in May and June. Yeah. And everything's dwindling down. Right. But anyway, yeah, you, you mentioned Dana had some other interesting news. I think I think we should touch on that because yeah. yeah, some exciting and, stuff. And these were like throwaway lines by Dana, which was interesting because He's he's so smart at how he does this because you would all of these announcements are massive announcements because we're talking about people that like have a huge impact on the sport, but he just casually throws these lines away in the middle of an Instagram live where he's talking about power slap. Again, this guy's just he just knows what he's doing. But he mentioned that there is a fight news coming up, and he just casually says that Connor has fight news coming up. Michael, Ch that uh, Volkanovsky has fight news coming up, that Oliveira has fight news coming up, and that Chandler has fight news coming up. What I thought was interesting is that he didn't mention Connor and Chandler together. That might have been by design. He might have just not been trying to give away the game too early. Uh, but it seems like those four guys have fights coming up, and those I think would be like maybe four of like the top seven guys in the UFC that that people really want to know what's going on. We can safely assume Connor versus Chandler is one of them, right? We would imagine so. Dude. I think so. I actually saw a tweet the other day, or this was yesterday before Dana's announcement. I saw a tweet, and this guy got a ton of hate afterwards from like the from the UFC and MMA media community. Yeah. But it was uh, it was a reporter who tweeted that Connor versus um Oliveira is gonna happen in December. And then people called him cloud chasers. He 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 denied the reports very shortly after. Um, but could be cool. I don't think it'll happen, but could be cool. <laughs> That's a massive fight if it is. I know that Connor has made some comments about Oliver in the past, but I mean, like Connor made comments about everybody, so we can't. Yeah, take he'll talk to shit. Um, but I do think, like, if I were to, what do you think? Do you think that Connor versus Oliveira is a bigger fight than Connor versus Chandler? Yeah, hundred percent. Oliver right. has way more fans. It's not even close. Which is why I wonder if they wouldn't do it right off the bat because Connor does have two fights left on his deal. So he has two fights left on his contract. So I'm like, what would they would they do Connor versus Oliveira and then do, you know, re-sign Nate Diaz to to fulfill that trilogy? You know, there's there's a lot of options they have. I think it's Connor versus Chandler, and he was just playing coy and probably said Chandler's name a little bit further on down the line just to avoid it being too super obvious. But let's just assume Connor versus Chandler is happening. What do you want to see for Volkanovsky? What what do you want his fight news to be? Because we obviously have a booked fight for the featherweight title between uh, Max Holloway and Ilya Teporia. So Volkanovsky doesn't play a role there. So if there's fight news for Volk, it's a non-title fight or it's a lightweight fight. What do you want to see for him? Whew. It's a tough one because he's, he, he's on a couple losses there. Obviously... Um, two of them are from him moving up to lightweight, and then he, he's got the title loss against Taporia there. Um, I don't the, the 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 featherweight division seems to be so stacked at the moment with so many opportunities that I just don't I just don't see a path for Volk, right? Like you got Holloway fighting Taporia, that's already booked. Um, you have fights booked for Arnold Allen, Evloev, Aljo. There's a lot of fights booked, and a lot of the like the winners from those fights potentially get the next title shot, right? Is Allen booked? I'm sorry, I thought Allen wasn't booked yet. So I thought Arnold Allen was booked. I he just fought wrong. Giga uh, Chicago. Uh, maybe you're right. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Right. Um, so but fine. still, like none of those fights are exciting. A Volk right. Oliveira fight could be very exciting at lightweight, right? Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't given it too much thought. Who, who do you want to see him fight against? No, I think you nailed it. That's what I was suspecting as soon as I saw Dana saying that was that Volk versus Oliveira is a potential fight. That Volk, it's kind of like a free fight for Volkanovski. It's like a little bit of a legacy fight. It's the guy that was champion while Volk was champion. Uh, the guy that was yeah. champion at lightweight versus the guy that was champion at featherweight. And uh, Volk can go up and fight Oliveira at lightweight. 
It's a free fight for both guys. It doesn't affect their ranking in their division, but it's a massive fight nonetheless. And then Volk can wait to get his title shot after, you know, the winner of Holloway versus Taporia happens, right? Or yeah. he beats, uh, let's say he beats Oliveira, then he's got another shot at, at moving up and, and fighting for the lightweight. Now, look, that might be a little bit of like fantasy matchmaking here. That might just be like me wishing for the stars. But that was my first thought. I feel like that is a an incredible fight. Um, okay, so what are, you, what are your thoughts on on this matchup here or this this matchmaking? Oliveira versus Chandler. You have the number two guy versus the number six guy in the lightweight division. Chandler has been waiting to fight Connor, and he's been so com compliant with the UFC that they might want to reward him with a title fight if he can win. If he beats Oliveira, who's number two, it would potentially set him up for a title fight. Potentially, well, I guess. This did, no, this wouldn't be the scenario, but it would kind of leave Islam versus Armin, hopefully early next year, and then for for Chandler or Alvera fight the the winner of that, and then you can set up Volk and Connor at lightweight as well, which stylistically could be more fun to watch. Yeah, my only concern with that is that I know that Connor wants to fight at welterweight. He wants to fight at one seventy, so that's the problem here. Um, yeah. I will say this uh, is that. Oliveira, I know that there were like rumors that it could be Oliveira versus Dan Hooker because Hooker just got a big win over uh, Mateusz yeah. Gamrot, put him at number five. And there have been rumors now for the past couple of weeks that that is a possible matchup here. So the problem is, is I doubt that Dan Hooker is already booked for a fight. And just after two weeks ago, he was just in a war with Matish Gamrot. It seems yeah. pretty quick to already have a fight booked. So I don't think that that fight's on the table. So that's why I think it is possible that one of these fights, I think it's one of these three guys, Chandler, yeah. Connor, or um, uh, Volk. One of yeah. those three. I guess it just depends what Volk is looking to do. No, he's there's no, no, like there hasn't been a public announcement by him whether he's looking to stay in featherweight or go continue his journey in lightweight. If he decides to stay in featherweight, then what you're saying with Dan Hooker makes a ton of sense, even if it's later in the year. So there was actually just a report, I think it was today, or earlier today or last night or something, that Volk uh, is possibly just waiting for his featherweight title shot, which is why I was thinking it's possible he's moving up for a lightweight fight in the interim. And fighting a guy like Oliveira, who's like more of a submission artist, not much of a knockout. He has knockouts, obviously, but more of a submission guy. Um, is a probably is an appetizing idea for Volkanovsky. You know, it's yeah. a, it's an it's a it's a it's a great matchup. It sells you can it's easy to market to fans, but it's also not a massive risk in any way if he wants to get back to the featherweight title. So I like it. I like that matchup a lot. Yeah, yeah, um, I agree. And stylistically, it'd be good for Volk to go against Oliveira. Less of a chance of him getting knocked out again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? So, like that, that's probably pretty relieving for someone like him, <laughs> considering what he's gone through recently. Yeah, and I just don't see. Um, I don't know. I mean, I know that Chandler was saying that he's that the UFC is willing to to offer him other fights besides Connor right now, but I just don't think he's off that train yet. I think Chandler yeah. is all in on the Connor fight until For they sure. tell him otherwise. So um, mm -hmm. we'll see. We'll see. Either way, it was fun to hear that those guys will be back soon. So hopefully we get an announcement uh, sooner rather than later. Um, while uh, during this press conference, uh, it's, it's funny. One of the first things Dana said was that he made a joke about um, cutting stitches with lawn shears. What the joke that he yeah. was making was it was about Marab Valshvili, who obviously was using um giant scissors to cut his stitches. And uh, I know we talked about this at the beginning, so we're not going to spend much time on it, but um, it got me thinking because you know, Marab is obviously about to have the biggest fight of his life, that's why fans are freaking out, like, what the hell are you doing? You're putting this fight in jeopardy, and we're just what are we work now we're two almost two weeks away exactly two and a half weeks from ufc 306 at the sphere one of the biggest most expensive uh fight uh pay-per-view cards of all time and i made a video about this i want to say like a month ago when uh sphere tickets were originally put on sale for the first time and they were going for like three thousand dollars minimum yeah. and then the, the the top seats like in the front row were going for something like 35 to forty thousand. 
And that has significantly dropped. We have like a 200% drop. They're going for like 1000 now minimum and they yeah. continue to decline. Now this is kind of expected as we're getting closer to the event. Um, I'm just curious if your thoughts, you might have more insight on this than me. Cause I'm not, a, I'm not much of a business guy, but it does seem to me a, like the venue plays a role in this simply because it's such a unique venue so that you're going to, you're going to, it's going to be expensive no matter what. But the fact that like what I've heard about the, the, uh, the sphere in general is that they have trouble selling in general. Like they are losing money like crazy at that place. If I'm not mistaken, cause they have like a 10 year plan just to make a profit. So I'm curious, what are your thoughts? And, and also Canelo is fighting on the same night. It's Mexican independence day. One of the biggest Mexican boxers in the world is fighting right down the road on the same night as UFC's Mexican independence day. I'm just curious what your thoughts are. If you think that this is like what, what your analysis of that is. Yeah, I was actually looking at tickets yesterday. They're there you can get them as low as 750. Okay. So even even less than a thousand. I think what happens with events that at such a high ticket price is that there's people who when an event like this comes out, they're like, I am going no matter what, I will be there. So the venue and the the organizers try to have the tickets at a at as high of a price as they think that they can get. And then they expect to drop the tickets later because at that point they're just trying to sell like the straggler seats. And just try to try to get rid of as many as possible and sell out. But at the end of the day, they make more revenue this way. So it's kind of shitty for the people who buy tickets early. But those people who are buying them early, like, don't really give a shit because they have the money to spend anyway. And it's like a few, it's a, it's a couple thousand dollars. And to the average person, it's a lot of money. But the average person is not buying five thousand dollar tickets, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, but I think that's what happened. So I think this was always part of the plan. Although, like, from an outsider perspective, you're like, oh, they're shit in the bed. But at the same time, they've already put 20 million in production, right? Like that's what Dana was saying. Well, I think he said 16, but I saw 20 million somewhere else. So like, you're not making that back from ticket sales anyway. Everything else is what matters a lot more than that for sure. I think a lot of it's going to go into pay-per-view too, because I think a lot of it's going to go into their pre-fight advertising. Uh, I think in the week leading up, we're going to see a lot of advertisements about the sphere itself. Of uh, it's Riyadh season too. So it's promoted by, by the uh, Saudi company, Re Riyadh season site promotion. Um, and I they bet have you that paid for most of the event. That right. Exactly. Deal. Yeah. Yeah. So they're not concerned about losing money on this. Um, mm -hmm. I'm more so thinking like what, what sort of precedent it sets for, for putting an event like this. It's so unique. Like I, I can't imagine that they would, I think Dana said that this is a one-off, right? They're not doing this ever again. This is like a one-time deal. They're probably never going to go back to the sphere. I think he said that. Am I wrong on that? Yeah, no, he did say that. No, no, he did yeah. say that. He said that multiple times. I wonder like how true he will be to his word. I yeah. feel like the sphere will all like the biggest thing about the sphere is the production and the production takes a ton of time, costs a ton of money. But I will like, I, I don't know for certain, obviously, but when it comes to production, a lot of these things are like one time setup and then fixing it up to make it different is a lot cheaper than putting it together in the first place, you know? Yeah. So I bet you if they did it again, they could do a very high level production for like a quarter of the cost. Um, but I could see this being a yearly event. Why, why would they not want to do International Fight Week at the Sphere every single year? Yeah, I guess it, it really depends on um, it depends on how well I think it does on pay-per-view. Exactly. Because uh, because that's what I was thinking is like, dude, what kind of cameras are they going to use? How are they going to get the vibe of the sphere to the people at home? Because obviously the majority of people watching this are going to be at home. So um, that's where I think is going to be a big because if they get like if they have like a 1.5, or like a, let's just say like a 1.2 or 1.3 million pay-per-view, they sell 1.3 million, like which is obviously extremely high in the era of uh, of illegal streaming. Um, but. I think that that will dictate it and I could see them doing it, especially if the Saudis remain, remain involved and you get Riyadh season and involved yearly. Yeah. yeah. And they will, and, if they yeah. want it, if the UFC wants it, like yeah. those guys dump money into sports, like there's no tomorrow because they have the money to dump. Right. So they'll keep dumping it, especially for like the U S premium advertising. Like they don't get that often. Right. Yeah. I saw somebody talking about um, Turk Al Sheik. I think that's his name, and 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 the Riyadh season yeah. guys. That just in terms of Saudi money in general, 
you know, whenever whoever you think is the richest man in the world is not the richest man in the world. And that whatever number you think the most amount of money somebody has is, is like it's it's wrong because what they, they have an unconscionable amount of, money, amount of money that we can't even possibly comprehend. That's like. Yeah, it, it, like well, it's, it all comes it's down to like unimaginable amount of money. Yeah, like you look at like someone like Elon Musk and you're like, he's the richest man in the world. It's because all his companies are public. So it's public information yeah. to be able to see how much he owns. But like with these yeah. guys, it's all private. There is no public. Um, so they don't have to disclose what they're making. Nobody has a clue what they're making. But to assume that there isn't a trillionaire there is is crazy. Yeah, no, <laughs> if, 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 it's 100%. If Elon's already like a, th a quarter of the way there, right? Yeah. So that's why if they remain investors, I think that they will go back and do it again. It just might, it just might be something where like logistically, it might be a difficult show to put on. I don't know. I, I just, I'm excited to see it because they've been actually very yeah. hush hush. They have not released anything nothing. in terms of how this is going to look other than the layout, like a blueprint layout. We know nothing about what this yeah. is going to look like. So um, very exciting. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I can't wait, but uh, yeah, Adam, thank you so much, man. Appreciate, appreciate it. it uh, brother. We will, uh, we're, we'll catch up next week on uh, Insider Betting when there's actual some fights to talk about. But yeah, this was, uh, course, this was a good time, bro. Bur Burns and Brady next week, baby. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Well, soon. thanks everybody for watching, and uh, we'll see you next thanks, time, guys.